white people. Question, what does it feel like to be white? Especially if you're white in America. I mean, if you're not in America and you're white, you can answer this question, but especially if you're white and American, how does that feel? I know being a black person, especially a black woman, one of the biggest issues is that we're always exhausted carrying our entire race on our backs. We always feel like a monolith, even though we're not a monolith, and that one of us can mess up and it would make the entire race look bad. And I'm sure it's the same way for Mexicans and, you know, indigenous people, but I never hear white people talk about stuff like that. So let me know. Stitch, duet, whatever. But how does it feel? Hello guys, thank you so much for stopping by to watch our videos. And of course, if you're here for the first time, please subscribe, like our videos, and uh, leave us a comment. Guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that uh, all white people are racist towards black people? Question. What does it feel like to be white? Go back and watch that whole video that she puts up. And to you, sweetheart, probably feels about the same way you feel. It's not about one person in a race that messes up that makes the whole race look bad. It's about several people in that race that makes the whole race look bad. It has nothing to do whether you're white or black or Asian or Mexican. We all have that same stereotyping from other races. So yeah, we probably feel about the same way you do. As far as not talking about it, what for? What fucking for? Absolutely unnecessary. I don't give a shit if Joe Blow robbed a bank. I don't give a shit if whoever cheated on their fucking husband. I don't give a shit if so-and-so, you know, did something, something else that's fucking stupid. They did it. They did it. I represent who I am, not who they are. I don't give a shit about them. You need to concentrate on you and how you represent yourself. Not trying to carry the weight of the, the black race on your shoulders because pff, they are not your fucking concern. You yourself are your own concern. So I don't know why you feel like you got to carry all that weight. Now, as far as being white and the black community, not everybody, not everybody. Because I do have black friends and they don't feel this way. But why you got to blame us for some shit that happened fucking hundreds of years ago? I've never owned a slave. I've never called somebody by the N-word. Why? Because I'm not that person. You guys think that all white people are racist. We're not. Not all of us. Some, uh, some of them, yes, they are. Like I said, it has nothing to do with me, so I don't give no fucks. Which is why we don't speak about it. So, I know your question was kind of rhetorical and race based otherwise you wouldn't have been like white people how does it feel to be white probably the same way it fucking feels to be black or Mexican or Asian everybody has their fucking faults don't put the weight of your race on your shoulders you need to concentrate on you and who you are as a person. Not who all these other motherfuckers are who keep fucking up. That's why we don't talk about it. We don't carry other people's weight. We have our own. Have a blessed day. So, white people. Question. What does it feel like to be white? White person here. In case that wasn't obvious. Fair question. You're probably not going to like the answer. Um, it feels a lot like what you just described. Yeah. You pulled in Mexican people. You pulled in indigenous peoples. You may as well pulled in white folk. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of looking at people and going, <laughs> so you're the reason we're still all considered racist. It's 2024. Could y'all not? Could you stop? You know? Um, looking at usually men of a certain age range and uh, going, are you the next mass shooter? Because you're... You're white. We've got our eyes on you. Okay. Um, if you're an ally, you're too fucking loud. Okay? Get to the back and sit down. But if you're not an ally, you're a fucking bigot. Okay? So essentially being white in America means you will never, could never actually be right. You will never do anything right because you have the audacity to be born white in America in 2024. So yeah, it's, um, as you say, exhausting for sure, but we do what we must. So white people question, what does it feel like to be white? There, that's sometimes answering a question like that feels so loaded as as a white female. Um, for me, it's always worried that I'm going to say something wrong, even though my intentions are totally different. Um, that's something that I think that we deal with. I'm told I have privilege, but I don't see anything that was ever actually handed to me. I I work very hard. I work every day. I have to take her own kids, pay bills and, and, and do like any other American more times than not. I feel like a female and my age more than I feel like my color, but it is exhausting to carry any kind of burden of, of what, of other people's actions. I think, you know, and, and I've had this discussion with, with many different races, many different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. I personally think the most important thing is that we be accountable for our own actions and for our own words and that people truly understand our intention more than, um, some kind of a uh, stereotypical thing and it's so easy um, I'm also in the south so I have to carry the fact that I have a southern accent and um, people think I'm you know dumb because of my accent I'm also half deaf I have a speech impediment so I have to constantly think about words and and how to pronounce them and sometimes I have to go around the block to to say something totally different because I have a hard time pronouncing. And so I've had people to think I'm dumb because of that too. So what, what ultimately comes down to is whether or not you care what people think. And I think that if someone truly knows who I am and they understand the person I am and my intentions, that's what matters the most. But it is exhausting if we were to continually carry the weight of the world, the weight of other people's opinions. I think if we can just be good people and good hearted people and, and be respectful to everyone, loving to everyone, that's what's most important. So white people question, what does it feel like to be white? Well, you asked, so, okay. Uh, first, well, you know how you were saying that for black women, it can feel like, you uh, are carrying the entire race on your back and you're a monolith and you got a red if you do one thing bad it affects the whole race well it's kind of the same i'm constantly hearing that i'm doing stuff i'm not doing and feel a way that i don't feel and getting fussed at for something i didn't do and had no control over So I'd say it feels a whole lot like you feel. I'd say we're a whole lot more alike than what we realize. And I'd say that's why the higher-ups keep trying to keep us divided is because 
if we ever found out that we're just alike, we're we're both humans, ain't we? That uh, they there would be no more higher ups because we would then be more powerful together. But that's just how it feels. Question: What does it feel like to be white? Especially, okay, so I, I may make people mad with this. I don't know if I do, that's not my intention. She asked a question, I'm gonna answer it honestly. So, what it's like to be white in America, it sucks. You can't be proud of who you are because you know we get told that we're colonizers and that we like to lynch people and you know we're culture vultures and and because we don't have no culture you know we don't even know how to season our food first of all i don't know how that lie got started but that's not true um you know and we get crucified for a past that we had nothing to do with nothing and i'm not you know if, if we support trump we're racist if we support the police we're racist you know I don't get that I don't because I'm here to tell you right now there's good and bad in every walk of life I've had run-ins with good police officers and I've had some really crappy ones dude I've had the complete tar beat out of me before uh, some of them I was being a hellcat some of them I wasn't I mean I've been strapped to a chair gagged bagged and had a thorazine I did the thorazine shuffle and they was beating on me choking me okay while I was strapped down so, it's good and bad in every walk of life. Um, you know, we get told that, you know, it, it's, it's almost like, and I'm not saying everybody is like that, so don't twist my words, but a lot of people, they think that it's okay and it's accepted to sit there and call us, you know, cracker, mayonnaise, milk, mighty whiteys, you know, colonizer, and all that, and like, if we support black artists, like I love rap if I'm sitting there vibing to a song and they just so happen to say the n-word like threaten to get jumped seriously like the America I grew up in I had black friends like boyfriends and everything that's how we used to greet each other like dabbing it up like hey what's up you know what I'm saying now you can't do that um, you know and it's not like and here's the thing, this is what upsets me is that there is this narrative going around that it's only white people that can be racist because no no other ethnicity has the capability of being racist, which is an absolute lie, okay? Because blacks, Hispanics, and Indians all hate white people. Some Asians, but you know, oh well, yeah, Asians too, but you know, it's like we're the only ones singled out you know and it really sucks because a lot of white people are just a melting pot of culture i have four different types of indian sioux cherokee chickasaw chickasaw and choctaw uh 48 percent i'm indian and then i have german scottish irish but like because my skin color is not dark enough i'm not considered an indian like where i'm at there's a lot of natives and you know five hours from here where my niece is they hate white people they hate white people and it's just sad dude <laughs> we can't be proud of nothing because we get blamed for everything you know and if we try if we try to be nice or we you know anything like that we get caught we get to you know they don't take it as us being genuine they take it as us us being um, butt kissers, you know, and like if there's an issue going on in the world that involves black people We're not to speak on it because that's black people problems, you know, like you don't speak on that But they can talk about white people problems. I don't get it. I really don't But I will say one thing that irks me to no end and I, I will be as blunt as possible mm -hmm. about this because it needs to stop Black kids in school need to stop trying to uh manipulate white kids especially the disabled ones who are in special ed to say the end word and telling them like hey we'll give you a pass go ahead and say it. it'll be funny go ahead and say it and then you know when they don't say it like this happened to my son my oldest son the one who's going in for back surgery the 29th 
um, they told him, we'll give you a pass. And Noah was like, no, I'm not saying that. So they were like, say vinegar, say vinegar. He said vinegar, just saying the word vinegar. And they closed their ears for the, you know, the beginning of the word. And then they just hear the end of it, the what sounds like the N word. And then they start calling him racist, spreading these rumors that he's racist. We were getting threats. We were, I was told that we were going to get jumped, that they were going to come kick in our door and they were going to bring their cousins, their aunts, their uncles. Now look, if you don't know anything about black people, they fight in packs. Okay. I know because I was jumped by five of them, cut with a box cutter from here to here, stabbed in the throat. And when I say cut, I mean, she laid me open down to the white meat, stabbed me millimeters away. see that but it's real little but right there but whenever I would like breathe or anything it would squirt and millimeters away from my jugular who goes to jail me and this was in Rome Georgia so you know I know how they fight okay I fought a couple more so and not because of racism either. just because we were friends we were drunk not the five that jumped me but other ones so, you know, I don't see why kids try to sit there and, like, they, like, they, they see that a kid's not racist, like, truly is not racist, and they're just trying to, like, be their friends, and they take that as an opportunity to try to manipulate that white child into saying something that, and, and, and like I said, it wasn't just my kid, it was a lot of the disabled children okay they were threatening to beat them up threatening to jump on them, everything i went to the school many a times the, the school was sweep, sweeping it under the rug like it was nothing we had to move the bad thing is stuff like that spreads like wildfire when they're videotaping your child and posting it online and calling him a racist it spreads people at the new school he's at they've already mentioned the videos yep we can't even go to the community pool without him being called racist He's been uh, cornered at the community pool by a bunch of black people. The white guards won't jump in and say nothing. I had to go over there and say, hey, get off my son or I'm going to drag you out of the pool. And no, it's not because I'm racist because I ain't going to white beat on my son, period. Or like, you know, we can't wear braids when really Vikings, Indian, like, they all wear braids. If we wear braids... It's just because we like the style, okay? The Kardashians, that's a whole other topic, okay? We ain't them. And they're not white. They're Albanian or Armenian, whatever. Or, like, I've heard that I'm not allowed to be wearing these because that's not a white people thing. Honey, I'm going to tell you right now. This I love this style. I don't care if anybody else don't like it. I don't care. I like it, okay? So, but one thing I will say... You know, everybody has done a real good job of allowing the, the government to, you know, divide and conquer us and, and split us all up and, you know, put little buzzwords in our ears and try to get us to turn on one another. Why? We don't need to be turned on one another. If anything, it should be all of us banded together against them because they're a bunch of liars and hypocrites. And it's like, you know, Trump is not racist. He He's done so much for the black communities, but if you support him, you're pegged as a racist. But yet the ones who are calling you racist for supporting Trump, they support the true racist, Biden. The one who said he didn't want his kids growing up in a jungle, going to school with, you know, kids of color. And, you know, if you didn't vote for him, you're not black. And if you're black, you don't know how to use a computer. And, you know, like he gave a eulogy at a Grand Imperial Wizard's funeral. That was his friend. A top KKK member. So, like... I just, I don't understand it. I'm confused and exhausted more than anything. Um, cause even like if I'm saying something, I like find myself like trying to back to like, oh my gosh, did that sound racist? Oh my gosh, did that, you know, offend somebody? Because I mean, you can get jumped around here. You know what I mean? Been there, done that. But that's my thought on it. Sorry, it was a little winded. And you know, if you take offense to that, that's on you. Okay, I'm just being honest. She asked a question. I answered honestly. So that's my take on being white in America. What does it feel like to be white? Especially if you're white in America.
So I know I'm going to get roasted seven ways from Sunday and I know that people are going to come after me for this video. Uh, but I feel like I needed to respond. Um, the, the lady's question, and, and it's a very valid question, I think, um, of what does it feel like to be white, particularly in America. And she goes on to say that she feels like uh, being black they carry the weight of the whole race on their shoulders. Like if someone um, who's black screws up, they carry that weight for the whole race. Like everyone feels it. And and I get it. Um, just a little background. I, I grew up a little Polak in a predominantly German town. Um, I pretty much got my ass beat every day for several years just because I was Polak. Um, that's not to say that I completely understand everything that black people have gone through, but I can relate. Um, my, my dad also lived in a predominantly black neighborhood, uh, and I spent a lot of time with him. Um, both of my sisters are married to black men. Um, my nephews are black, so I'm not saying that gives me any credence or credit to, to speak on this. But I just wanted to say, how does it feel to be white in America? We don't think about it. Um, it's not, I, literally there is nothing at any point in our lives where we've said, oh, we're white, this is awesome. Um, and looking in from the outside to the black community, and I, I really don't want to come off as, as mean or hateful, but I think that the black community as a whole does this to themselves. You allow the black leaders um, to put you in that position to continually make you feel that way. Look, I have lived and worked all over the United States. I've met thousands of people, worked with thousands of people. I can tell you that even in the deepest parts of Alabama, Sylacauga, Alabama, I have only ever met a handful of really truly racist people. Um, there's, there's no reason for you to carry the weight of your race on your back. Um, I, I think as a whole you, you have to let that go. It's, it's not coming from our side where we put that on you. It's not coming from white people that put that on you. It's coming from your own people. Um, so, I, I would say, it's it, it, it's not, being white is not, it's not a thing. It really isn't. Um, so I hope you have a blessed day. Um, and yeah, that's it. White people, question. What does it feel like to be white? It's a really good question. I don't think I know the answer because I'm white and I grew up in a white su white supremacist country. I do think though that there is a difference between being rich and white, which is like default white, like white white, and then like being poor and white, which is like white trash. Um, and I think that like a lot of the reaction that we've seen from white people uh, around like the opposition to DEI and the opposition to the Black Lives Matter movement, I think, is sort of driven by a sort of frustration uh, that they have in not being able to participate fully in the idea of whiteness that is promised to them by white supremacy. Because, like, white trash folk like me, um, like, there are these, like, pipelines that run throughout your life and they start with your family of origin and they go through your schools they go through your career um and yeah so like if you grow up in a poor community and nobody around you has a high paying job and you don't know what careers are possible then you're gonna do what you see people around you doing and that is going to be other low-income jobs with like a dead-end future and like I wanted to be a scientist and I went back to school for STEM recently for biology and I got to have an internship at a very prestigious um, uh, oceanographic la uh, laboratory and um, 
I really got to see how that operates up close because uh, like most of the people participating in the internship program were from Ivy League schools and I was like the token poor kid from the community college and um, yeah all these other kids they had like parents who have PhDs uh, they um, have done work like they're going to an Ivy League school, they've done like multiple projects w in cooperation with the lab already. They have like working relationships with um, senior research scientists already, and then they're ready to go as soon as that. They, like they'll have published papers by the time they get their undergrad, and then they're ready to go into a career in science with like having published papers, going into a postdoc thing, and then you have your whole like postdoc career and blah blah blah. But like. For me, like as a poor person who went back later in life, um, like none of that is like really a possibility for me. Uh, and it's just because, like, I don't know, it's sort of like being growing up poor, you're sort of set up for failure from the jump. Uh, so, yeah, and like we're like we're told by white supremacist society by like mother culture whispering in our ear about what we should be expecting of ourselves because we're white even though we're poor that you know we, we should be able to do anything we put our minds to and we should be able to like you know follow our dreams and it's all it's bullshit um like we don't but like so there's like yeah i don't know i think that's why there's like the MAGA movement is growing so much right now and why there's like so much like kind of like white supremacist adjacent uh anger amongst poor white people is because of that cognitive dissonance between like them being told what whiteness is which is like rich people whiteness and but then they're like poor people white and like the that frustration of like not being able to participate fully in what they're told being white means so, oh man, long story long, uh, I think it's, uh, I think to be rich and white, to be like white, white would be, it probably feels like fucking awesome. Um, probably feels like you don't have to think about fucking anything. Um, I don't know though. That's not me. Uh, I certainly don't feel like the previous person said that I have to be like a representative of my race or whatever because like I'm not a I'm not oppressed in that way um <laughs> I am oppressed in other ways uh I don't know this is a good conversation though I'm, I'm really interested to follow this and see what other people have to say white people question what does it feel like to be white you know, I was going to ignore this post and go on, but you did ask, so I'm just speaking for myself, but how does it feel to be white? Um, it feels like skin to me, and that's what I don't understand, you know. How would you feel if a, if a white person got on here and said, black people, how does it feel to be black? I mean, really? What, what difference does it make? We're all human. But, since we want to bring race into this, how does it feel to be white? Sometimes it's very exhausting because we're being constantly blamed for shit that we didn't do that happened, you know, like 200 years ago to people that we don't even know. Um, so that's kind of exhausting. Anytime one of us stands up and says, hey, we're proud to be white or whatever, we're instantly called a racist, but yet y'all and others can stand up and say, I'm proud to be black, proud to be Mexican, whatever, but how dare we do it, because we're instantly a racist. We're constantly getting bombarded, you know, with this whole race thing, and we're always made to feel like we're the ones that done something wrong. And it don't matter if we were there or not there or whatever, we still get the blame for it. So it's it, it does get quite exhausting. And like I said, you know, y'all stand up and say you're proud to be black, but God forbid if we do it because then we're all of a sudden racist. You know how, how that works. Um, we're not, I mean, you brought this up, so I'm just stating, you know, some things here. 
Y'all have your BET, your Black Entertainment Channel. Do you see a white one? No. Why? Oh, because it would be racist. Um, Y'all have black-only colleges. Do we have white-only colleges? Uh, no, because that would be racist. You know, it's like everything we do as white people is racist, you know, and that's what we get sick of. You know, why can't y'all just live your lives? Let us live, li li let us live our lives. We're all human. What, what? This is 2024. All you're doing is feeding this flame that the higher ups keep wanting you to do by falling into all this race traps. Get past the skin color. Maybe we can do something around here if everybody did. You know, maybe if we all actually come together like the higher ups are trying to keep us from doing, we wouldn't have the problem from the higher ups. Just saying. But you asked the question, so, yeah, I mean, that's just how I feel personally. You know, it, it's very exhausting sometimes. You know, you got to watch everything you say because you're going to be labeled a racist or whatever, you know. So, yeah, that can be very exhausting. But other than that, you know, yep, I. I don't know. How does it feel to be human? That's my question. Just how does it feel to be human? You tell me. So, white people, question. What does it feel like to be white? You asked the question, what it's like to be white in America. Well, I don't know. I guess, like, what it feels like to be any other American. Um, ridiculous taxes. Um, working. 50 hours a week to pay for a house that I'm hardly ever in to pay for a car that I solely use for work because that's all I do. Um, taxes upon taxes. We, we pay, we pay them to work. They take taxes out of our tech. We pay them to live in the houses. If you buy a house, you pay the mortgage. You have to pay the mortgage for the land and for the house. Like you didn't already pay tax title and license when you bought the house. So then you have to pay those taxes on top of that. Then you go to buy things for your house and you pay taxes on top of that. Then automatically, you know, we have 23 different diversity groups in our, in our, um, company, which irritates me because at the end of the day, we're all people, right? So you just build up people, build people. That's what you do. Um, we have a African American, um, Hispanic, veterans um and a women's group uh and a couple more but the women's group is i'm a part of it actually and sometimes there's comments in there made that like act like men are trying to destroy us and get us kicked out of being in construction and it's actually kind of hurtful because i've worked in construction for six years now and I can tell you right now 90% of the men don't care they are very helpful they try to help me carry ladders they've tried to help me do some work they've tried to help me reach things that I couldn't reach because um, I'm also five foot but um, I don't feel any different being a woman now are there everyday things because I'm working with most men absolutely but also being in America I get stopped at Walmart door and asked for my receipt almost every single time I have been kicked out of stores <laughs> for what reason I don't know but I've also been followed around Walmart they have um, watched me when I went to pick out nail polish um, because I had two or three uh, nail polishes and I was kind of holding them like this so that I could hold on to them they followed me around and acted like I was gonna steal something um, I don't know if it's any different than what you guys go through, but I also know that people have this preconception of like me having some white privilege. What privilege? That's, that's the only thing I, I'm, I'm asking because whenever I applied for my position, they actually were like telling me they were trying to be more diverse. And so the fact that I was a woman, I got it, which is kind of sucky because if I'm not more qualified, why give me the job? I, w I don't want to get the job because I'm a woman. 
or I'm half Hispanic. I want the job because I deserve the job. So it's kind of irritating, honestly, because they're looking for more diversity in the company. So they want to put someone um, with a different ethnicity, um, African American, Hispanic, Asian. They they are pushing to be more diverse, which is a great thing. Don't get me wrong, it's a great thing. But they chose me because I was a woman over a guy who's actually been in construction for a really long time and he was really, really smart. Not saying that I'm I'm not smart. I'm just saying they chose me based on the fact that I was a woman, which is kind of irritating because a man who deserves a job didn't get the job because they were trying to be more diverse. And I'm just really concerned um, and confused because everybody just seems to think that I have it so much better because I'm in uh, a white American. But I live in a rent house. I have no privileges. I work my butt off 50, 60 hours a week. My husband does too. He works six days a week just so that we can make ends meet. I don't own my house. I don't qualify for any <clears throat> assistance, which would really be nice because I'm tired of paying for my food. It's expensive, especially right now, all the price is going up. But I'm just waiting for somebody to tell me what my privileges are because I'm ready to use them. Like, seriously, how do I tap in? Um, how do I use these privileges? Because I really need them right now. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted of thinking that America is so great, uh, land of the free, but we pay so much in taxes and we work so hard and we all, I, look, babe. I want everybody to be happy and I want everybody to have a good life and I want everybody to be able to, I'm not going to say live in peace because that's not going to ever happen, but to understand we're all just people living in this place and if we all were just able to help out each other just a little bit, then it would be so helpful. It really would. I have three sisters that are half black and I have four other siblings on top of those three sisters that are half Hispanic. And I can tell you right now, we all fight for the same stuff. We all we all deal with the same crap. And <clears throat> a lot of stuff that I do, um, I do because I eat food <laughs> that my husband thinks is crazy because he's never eaten it. But it's poor people food. It's not. I was raised in the hood with my sisters. We were raised in the projects, running speed bump to speed bump barefooted in the middle of the night because we had nothing else to do. So, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just know what it's like to live in America, and right now in America, it's ridiculous. Why are we paying almost $4 a gallon for gas? Why are we paying so much in taxes? Why is it so hard to get a job? I don't know. I hope that answered your question. If not, I'm sorry. But I'm exhausted, too, for people thinking that I have to prove that I'm not racist or I have to prove that I don't have some privilege or I love y'all. I love you. I love everybody the same. Everybody the same. I don't see color. What I see is effort, realness, love and affection. Um, I do street ministry and prison ministry because I want to give back because I was incarcerated. Um, but I just want everybody to understand that I get people have struggles and I get some struggles are not right and I get some people are hateful and some people are ugly and some people do things that they shouldn't be doing. But most of us, we just care about people's safety and love and affection. White people, question, what does it feel like to be white? It doesn't really feel like anything. You don't run around thinking, hey, I'm white. What does it feel like? Because we don't race identify like that. We just are. But I can tell you, it feels like sometimes people are a little unsympathetic. Um, if anything happens to you and you have a disaster and you need like services like welfare or food stamps, you can't get them. Um, people are really unsympathetic and kind of rude um, these days. Um, but we just kind of do our own thing, live our lives, go to work, do our thing. Don't really think too much about it. We're not racially centric like that. But uh, mostly it kind of feels like the world has gotten kind of rude and unsympathetic and kind of nasty. And to those of us that really have never done anything to harm anybody of another race, we're kind of like, what the hell? So 
Oh. What does it feel like to be white? I've never really thought about that before. But since you want to ask the question, I'll, I'll answer the best I can as a palm-colored friend of yours. Feels like being blamed for absolutely everything. If something goes wrong, it's the white people's fault. Feels like being called any slur that somebody wants to call you and you can't say nothing back. Because if you do, you're in the wrong. Feels like being told you don't do enough. You don't speak out enough. Okay, so when you do speak out, you're told to stay in your place. And it also feels like going to a comedy club and as soon as you walk in, everybody stops and stares at you like you ain't supposed to be there. However, I don't care about none of that. None of that bullshit. You know what I do care about? The fact that it's hot as hell in Georgia right now. Peace. White people. Question. What does it feel like to be white? I don't think that's an easy question to answer. I mean, I think it depends where you're from. What part of the country you live in. I lived in California for a while when I was a kid. I lived in Nebraska. I lived in Iowa. I lived in Illinois when I was in the Navy. And I had friends of all colors. Never had issues when we were kids. We, uh, we hung out. We played. We ran around, and we did stupid shit. Now, it seems like race is pushed like no other. And it's crazy. That's what the media wants. They want to separate everybody. They want to make everybody hate each other and everybody fight against each other. And it's bullshit. Because... Some of the worst people I met in the world are white, and some of the best people I met in the world are black. The best man I've ever known in my entire life, Coach Ben Parks. He was a black man, and he taught me more about life, and more about being a man, and more about just being nice to other people than anybody I ever met in my entire life. He cared about everybody, no matter who you were, no matter where you come from, and the color didn't mean nothing to nobody. Sometimes, where you come from plays a huge part. When I was in the Navy, I had joined from California and had a couple guys that joined from New York. And they were black. And they didn't like me because I was white from California and I must have been a surfer. But it was funny because when I moved to California from Nebraska as a kid, Everybody in California thought I was just some corn farmer. <laughs> and then it was funny. When I moved to Iowa from California, people thought I was some surfer punk and that I had no clue about life. And it's just crazy the different thoughts people have no matter where you're at in the country. That's why I feel like people need to travel more in the U.S. So many people want to travel to see other countries, but... Man, there's so many differences inside our own country that people don't even realize is here. And you got to get out there. You got to meet different people, different cultures, different races, different backgrounds, because everybody's different. And I feel like you can feel good about where you come from and you can feel bad about where you come from. It just depends on the people around you and how much they build you up. That's why I'm a firm believer that you don't need to keep negative people around in your life. You keep the positive. And I don't care if the negative are family or friends or people you don't know. They're negative. You get rid of them. You don't, you don't need to deal with stress from people that have nothing to do with your life. Keep positive people around. The research confirms that uh, white people are very much racist towards black people. The white people are always jealous of uh, of the black people because they are black. You know, I don't understand the logic behind that. How can you hate someone because he's black and you are white or, or is a given color and you are a given color? It doesn't make sense. Why do you think white people hate black people? And yet black people have done them nothing. If it's about hating each other, I 
feel like it's the black people should be hating on the white people, but not the white people hating on the black people. Why am I saying this? Because uh, looking at the history of uh, black people and white people, their engagement has not been good, and uh, many black people have hold it in their hearts that uh, white people have done them evil, and therefore they should uh, ask for forgiveness and as well pay for the reparations for all the atrocities that they have done to the black people. It is now the black people who should hate on the white people, but not the white people hating on the black people. So, I also come to understand uh, that uh, not all white people are racist. In fact, there are many white people who love black people, and of course they are married, and it really works for them. So, not everybody or not every white person is a racist. It also depends with the environment where you are brought up, you know. There are parents who still see black people as, uh, as less uh, before them. So, you know, as they grow old, they tend to hand this thing over to their children. But there are few, few white people who have realized that this is a shit, man. How can we hate on other people just because of their skin color? This is something that should not be there. And the main reason behind this has never been told. And I think the world is hiding something from the black people. Why is it that everyone hates a black man? What has this black man done to the white people? Why are they hating us so, so much? So not all white people hate. Okay? We must come clear on that. Not all white people hate uh, black people. In fact, they love black people and they love associating or surrounding themselves with their friends who are black and friends who are white. So they also feel so awkward when they see their fellow treating a black person in an awkward way. But this is something that can be prevented, okay? It is the young people, the young people, the people of my generation, who reject this thing, whether you are black or you are white. It is us to take this responsibility at hand and reject being racist to one another. So let us support those people who support us and love those who love us. So guys, I don't know what to think about this video. If you are here for the first time, please leave us a comment. And guys, I love you so, so much. And thank you so much for your great support. And may God bless you. And let us meet again in my next show.